There we go. That's a lot better. There we go. That's a lot better. None of that matters. Let's see if we can change the angle on the angle here. Oh, there we go. Okay, now we can see that. Pretty decent. Yes, yes. No? All right, we got a few of them. you guys on here. Hey, let me know. Um, I just got a new webcam. So I'm trying to play with this thing to figure out what's going to be the best uh, way to do this. First of all, can you guys hear me? What's up, Jim? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Can you see yes. all of this? I can. Can you hear it? Yeah, I just turned it down. Okay. Right on. Right on, right on, right on. All right. Cool. Sorry, I did a deal a minute ago trying to get this to come on, but it wasn't taking that camera. Um, I'm no techie dude. I need to get a little more techie dude, but uh, just trying to get it figured out. Like... I should actually look in to this camera to talk to you guys, but I'm looking over here to the computer. Mm -hmm. So everything looks weird. Right on, thanks, I'm glad everybody can hear me. All right, before we get going, there's only four people, holy cow. I guess we'll wait just a little bit longer uh, before we get going. Jim, have you started the uh, Pumpkin Demon yet? You were talking to me earlier. So I know you're watching, but are you working at the same time? That'd be my question. We got six people now. So Kim. Jim, um, right now, who's thought we got Jim on here? Kim's on here. You're on here. I wish I could see who's actually on. You might be able to. Um, nope, that doesn't. That doesn't do anything. Jim says not yet. In the next couple of days, working months. Right on. It takes a while. Let's pause. Okay. I'm gonna show you. Wendy, hi. Hi, Wendy from Australia. Awesome. You're what, the next day? So it's, you're in sometime in the morning, right? Tomorrow morning for me? So, and then, not yet, not in the next couple days. Sorry. Jim's going to be in the next couple days. He's going to be starting. He's been watching the stuff. He's on. Jim is awesome. He is a patron. And he was watching more of the... Uh, a little more detailed pumpkin demon tutorial deal asked some questions earlier so it should be fun oh yeah uh and i don't know what that tutorial i don't remember but uh when i started that whole pumpkin thing on the demon that was uh i based that thing in a i used a balloon first and then wrapped the balloon in strip mache and then went with cotton because the cotton mache is like way, 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 way lighter. So you can still get cool pumpkins with it, but they're like way lighter. So they're, you can get away with more by, when says you know, Australia. 10 a.m. I wouldn't have Australia. any motivation to be on here at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Probably sitting back on the couch, drinking some coffee. If she drinks coffee. Saying, let's watch this idiot do something today. Tonight. We got seven, seven more, another person. So, you know what? Let's just go ahead and get started. So, last week we did a little live deal on this dude. Um, if you saw it, great. If you didn't see it, we used a, uh, what was that thing called? Uh, uh, shepherd's hook? Yeah, yeah. I, I always used, forget until I, you say it. used a shepherd's hook right and kind of rebent it. I've got one over here. I went and bought a whole bunch more because I want to make more sense. Oh, 
Oh, all hung up. So my lo local Dollar Tree's got these. Uh, they call them a shepherd hook, whatever, for planting. They're like a dollar, dollar twenty-five. Uh, pretty cheap, and this is pretty stout, right? This really, you can bend it, but you need some pliers and stuff, so it holds up pretty good. So I started out with uh, shepherd hook, drilled it into some wood, bent it all around, and then the pumpkin here is a pumpkin that. I made a mold of and used his Home Depot uh, green foam stuff to see how it would work. And it kind of works. The stuff, I've seen it shrink up on me too. But anyway, I've got some of these pumpkins left over. Boom, Shepherd's Hook. Here we are. Last week, I just kind of wrapped all this stuff up and uh, taped it and formed it up with um, newspaper. And then uh, early this week, I went ahead and mached this a little bit. All I did was do... Um, newspaper i'm uh, not newspaper i'm sorry uh i used paper towels and wrapped it all up i didn't do several layers it's still kind of squishy which is fine i just wanted to make it cohesive uh because the clay that we're going to put on today to do all the detail with the clay once it hardens up will be pretty stiff and pretty rigid yeah i put a big look here sign You're right not, there I, think you like looking at yourself. Uh, <laughs> I do i like to see myself <laughs> sexy. Um, oh boy, getting deep in here. So, anyway, tonight we're going to work on cleaning him up. Um, kind of showed you. Oh, so the the leaf things uh, that I kind of made at the end last time. I did the two pieces of newspaper wedged over this wire. That dried up was still pretty weak after that i went ahead and this is i put uh what you know that shiny shouldn't really use it but i'll get away with it uh this is cardboard from uh dr pepper box so it's pretty thin pretty malleable however it's much stiffer so it made these um much stiffer and easier to work with so we're going to put these on the cool thing is since we got that wire in there right I can bend the shape and that little leaf will hold that shape so i can kind of bend you know i don't know like a hand design into the leaf we can put it on here put a little warm shea on it and we're good to go so we're going to put those on here first and then i'm going to start some egg carton clay um Sorry. no we're good I'm trying to get my dog comfortable. You're exactly right, Loretta. I'm full of myself sometimes. A little drinking helps that out. Um, you turn on captions. Oh, how do we do that? I don't know. Hang on. So we'll stop real quick. Let me see if I can turn captions on. I don't. Let me see, Kathy. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Da, 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 da. What's over here? That's that. well, for all your videos, she's deaf. Oh, oh, you know, okay, I will. Uh, Is there a way to do that? I think I there's a way. I, I think there's a way I can go back and change all the other videos and get some captions on them. I don't know if I can do. So I probably really need to look at that. I, can you? Re I take it you can read lips. Hopefully so. Well, I'm trying to. Um, I said he's great. He's going to try. I wish somebody knew how to do it. Oh, awesome! Jim says that that you may be able to turn it on at on your end. Uh, okay. So right now, Kathy, as far as the stream goes. I don't see an option for me to be able to turn captions on right now. That may have been something I had to do beforehand, but I haven't done a lot of this live streaming no, stuff. Captions are unavailable. That's the problem. So I don't know. Um, I'll have to look at that and play with that and see if, if beginning when I set this up, if I get captions on. And then I know, I'm pretty sure I can go back on my YouTube channel and try to turn captions on. So... 
I'll see what I can get figured out on that stuff. Dang, spine surgery. That sucks. Sorry to hear. Um, I happy to know you're watching my goofy stuff uh, during this point in time. Okay. So let's get after. I'm going to attach these to him. Since this isn't uh, really thick and I've got this real thin, I've got this. I don't know. This was a kiss. Will that focus on there? I don't. Yeah, there we go. Uh, maybe. Anyway, uh, this came with a set of sculpting tools. A cheap set of sculpting tools. I don't even know what it's really used for. But I'm going to poke some holes in this guy. And then I'll cut some of these down. And hot glue them in the place. Hopefully, it'll take up good enough that it'll keep it from twisting. And we'll get these arms on. We'll get these little arms on here. We're going to just put some uh, clay on this. And go from there. And this one, this isn't going to take long. It's going to be pretty quick. This whole project, really, overall, is um, is a pretty. It's going to be pretty quick. Because once we get done with this part tonight, uh, from this part, then we'll go in and start painting. And if you guys want me to do a live stream on the painting, then we will do a live stream on the painting. We, I'm just random. Here we go. We're going to be all over the place. Uh, I bought, I haven't tried these yet, but I was at Michael's the other day and I saw these. They're an acrylic paint, but they're made. It says that this is set up for pouring. So those people who like kind of pour and then spin and do all that stuff. So I figured since it was loose enough to pour that this would probably shoot through uh, my um gosh darn it my airbrush pretty decent so i picked up a few of these to play with them and see how well it works in the airbrush so i've got some off colors i've kind of got pumpkin colors to do so when i go to paint this guy and do this i'm going to experiment with this stuff see how well it works because if it works good then i'll buy more colors because sometimes it's a lot easier to airbrush if you have an airbrush than it is to just um, paint things on so anyway we're not doing this tonight, but I thought I'd just show you some stuff I found. You have to do it from clicking on your profile picture and click settings in the left-handed menu. Uh, up here? Can I do that while I'm doing this live? I don't know. I'm just telling you how it told me to do it. I'm supposed to go to settings and then you, um, from the left-handed menu, click playback and performance. I don't. You might not be able to I'm do not going to be able to do that while I'm live. Probably not. Because it's not giving. It's just giving me my channel, YouTube, yeah. switch account, sign up. So I can't do that live. Yeah. So I'll have to reset that later. Um. Sorry, I'd really like to get that uh, captions on, but I don't. I can't do it live at the moment. So I'll try to rework all that stuff. Um. Later. I just kind of, I've never really thought about that. I guess I should probably think more about that stuff. So anyway, we got a hole here. And we're going to do another hole here. I'm hoping, oh, I've been it this year, that I can get some, a bunch of cool twisted pumpkin things made this year we're gonna there's no way i'm gonna get that whole thing in there all the way down my big head getting in the way of course it is that's too far out let's get this down I am glad to see people out here on a Saturday night. Once again. There's another person. Hey, glad to see you both tonight. I think I should be over there showing off so you can see me. Because all you see is his bald head. Rita, glad to see you too. Do you want to be on camera? You can come around no. over here. No. They don't want to see this. 
My wife says that you guys don't want to see her on camera. <laughs> oh, crap. So we're just going to do some weird shaping with Psycho Axe Man's back. He's giving Psycho Axe Man, what's up, bro? Really? Do it? Dude, right on. I'll, you're... <laughs> I can't tell you how much I, I, well, I can tell you this, dude. I don't know when you came on, but since last week's deal, um, I bought a webcam. So right. we're doing it off a of webcam, and that's really, I justified that because of these chats from last week. So appreciate that stuff well, a whole lot. It's looking color, and she says we would like to see you. Uh, maybe. Maybe I'll come over there in a minute. <laughs> So here's the deal. Uh, I'm just going to go, woo! I almost hit her with that. Then, boom! Went that way. Um, that would have been abuse. Abuse. <laughs> Axe Man, if this pumpkin holds up and it doesn't shrink, because I've got some more of these pumpkins, um, <laughs> we'll make some. If this thing doesn't shrink up and I don't have problems with it and can make some more, then we'll get. Uh, he just said I want to buy that when it's done. I'll get it worked out. I don't, I, this, I got to make sure this doesn't shrink. Yeah, because the I, other ones did. That really scares me. I have to make sure that that doesn't happen. Everything's kosher and it's all good. Then, yeah, we probably, because you're here in Cali, right? So, in, no, when we go. in August, um, when my boy graduates, um, we can meet up, whatever. I can bring one of these down or this one down or whatever because i might make another one that's even cooler that you think is cool but you want to put this outside in your garden i don't know if it'll last forever <laughs> i mean i know maybe the, build a little hut around it <laughs> the stuff i make last i know I, when halloween hits i put it out there for 30 days and they make it 30 days and i and they last and you know i've got them, but i haven't tried one just out forever to see what it does uh, we're going to add some glue to this stuff here i can't connect to your phone as you can I? you can probably pull me up on my phone and watch it i know it'll be under your channel right so i was just wondering if i could try to help with the caption thing oh no, yeah I'm thinking about that'll now. probably I don't think you're going to be able to help out with the caption thing right now. Yeah, I don't think so either. Not while we're live. That is something I will definitely work this on is, in the um, future. So, Cali, Burbank, around Los Angeles. We can get it figured out somehow. <laughs> All I'm doing here is adding a little hot glue. I stuck those in. I'm adding some more hot glue real close to these stems to make sure that this doesn't twist and go a different direction what's up corinda we got some friends over tonight and just some people hanging out with this while we do you ever use insta morph d plastic pellets in your project i've seen those plastic pellets well like you kind of add water to them or whatever and then they turn into a uh uh a moldable deal and then they air dry i but i haven't ever no i've never used it so i don't i'm not for sure yeah. that, that stuff's always looked cool and it's intrigued me but i've never used, but i have uh i have made what call uh uh what is it porcelain um uh, air dry porcelain something i can't oh I looked it up years ago, and you can make this kind of air dry hand porcelain stuff. Um, it's pretty interesting. It really dries super, super hard, and then it, you, you can get a wet anything else. It doesn't break back down. And the werewolf that I made, if you guys have seen the videos back in the back, all those teeth and the werewolf were made out of that porcelain. Um, the claws that were on his hands and feet were all made out of that porcelain. Uh, that stuff holds up really well. Kind of a pain to make it, but it does does work well. So I have used that. I can't remember what they. There's a there's a specific name for that. We can get a chair from the breeze room. I don't want to open that right now. Hmm? I didn't want to get it right now. 
So, all right. Let's get after this. So I just made a new batch of egg carton clay today. Uh, and I used Type Bond 3. The Type Bond 3 is a little bit different the way it acts uh, when I was mixing it than the Type Bond 2. So we're going to figure out how this stuff works out um, today and tonight as it dries up. Hopefully it's really good because it's supposed to be way more weather resistant, so it may really help out uh, a little bit more. Mm. Our plan is we're just going to cover this whole thing with uh, a carton clay, and then I'm just going to like brush it smooth. And when I brush this stuff smooth, I've noticed I've done another project. Uh, even though it looks smooth, once it dries up, it crinkles, and it gives this really cool mm. bind texture to it. Mm. So that's why I went with this a carton clay because the way it crinkles up. Put this on here it's going to look really good it'll, it'll look like vine once it's all all really done and set in hopefully i've got enough paste because i didn't yeah i got enough paste we'll get moving with it but i'm going to add paste on this first that way it's got something to bite to i got the dogs down here we got friends down here dogs are sneezing there's all kinds of things going on. Charlotte, hello. Sorry I'm late. Looks great. Uh, you're not late. We were late first. You're not late. Exactly. We were late. You haven't missed a whole lot other than the fact that I was trying to figure out how to get my camera to work. And all I've done is add these little leaf things to it. Okay. Talked about the fact that I added a little thin cardboard to the back of them to siphon them up. Um, how about anybody that's watching right now? Is anybody in the middle of some kind of cool project or whatever at this given point in time? And if so, let me know. I'm curious to know what you're working on. Porcelain clay? Is that what you're talking Porcelain about? clay, that's it. Yes, yes, <laughs> that is it. Thank you. I forgot what it was called. I appreciate that. Yes, porcelain clay. That's exactly what it was. Charlotte can't watch while I'm getting up at 3 a.m. for work. Holy cow. It's such a cool class. It collects me $20. Really? Get, dude. Right on. I really appreciate that. And that's the, oh, hey, that brings that up. So last week we were talking about people were talking about actually wanting to do some live classes um where i put out and give a list and we kind of make things together you guys can i make it along with you and then if you guys have questions or whatever so i i'm really thinking that i'm going to well, that we're going to do that like so as soon as i'm done messing with this thing we get this guy all done then um uh, then i think we'll do i'll do some uh some like actual live classes where maybe we'll do an email list or something or whatever. And then I can get you guys um, a list of the materials that we're going to use and all that stuff. And then go from there. Concrete. Pe what are you making with concrete? Hand painting postcard. Oh, for a local museum. That's nice. Awesome. You know what? The only thing kind of bites on here. I love YouTube. I like YouTube more than I like Facebook and stuff. But like you guys that are like working on some of those projects, like I wish YouTube had a way, like even right there in the chat where you, you could, could actually it. post a picture, right? Yeah, so we could see all that stuff. That'd be freaking awesome. Um, Axman says you really should do it, and I agree. Uh, the classes yeah yeah that's, that's it once we're done with this thing and so like next week we'll paint this guy and we'll do a live deal on painting this guy and then after that i don't know i don't know how to do it whether i give maybe i'll send out through i don't know if i should send out through facebook group or something or whatever get a list of emails or whatever so i can somehow get a notification of the class we're going to do and the materials that you're going to need and all that stuff so we can just kind of build something uh together on it exactly 
so we'll get it figured out and look this then here's the thing too see so this clay is going to harden up real good and like you know i'm missing there's some spots here that I'm, that doesn't matter it doesn't i'm going to leave those spots open and i'm going to run the shave paste and my brush over this kind of smooth everything together if there's some spots that aren't completely covered in this and this particular project it doesn't really matter because the shepherd's hook that's in here is stout enough to keep this thing shaped so i'm not really worried about clay taking on the real structural integrity of this thing so xmas says no rush man and keith says ducks frogs elves all out of concrete really holds up outside and then charlotte i want a tutorial on a big pumpkin art for carpoint carport entrance <laughs> That's a big pumpkin. Holy crap. I want, but that's the thing. I want, oh, pumpkin arch. That'd be, yeah, we could do something like that. Wouldn't even have to be. Jim says, email, not everyone has Facebook. Right. Not everyone does have Facebook. I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get a hold of all you. Like, so there's like, I don't know if you guys really, like, I have the option now that I can like do these little post things on YouTube where it's like a picture or whatever. Uh, I can actually do like a picture and say, hey, what? And if you guys are following YouTube close enough and paying attention to that stuff, I can send out notifications that way too, right? I just don't know how many people are paying it. That's the deal, right? I've got this YouTube channel. It's cool. You guys come on here when I do some of this stuff, but I don't know how closely everybody's really watching the channel or watching those notifications or whatever. Um, if I feel like the group's really kind of watching those notifications and stuff, then I'll start trying to communicate all that stuff with you guys uh, that way. If that works out easier. Xman says it's just evil looking, and Charlotte says I'm still not good at making my own skulls. I don't feel like that's easy to do. Skulls are a pain, and the thing with skulls are like, so I've done a bunch of replication of skulls, and I've showed some videos on that. I made a few skulls from like complete scratch without going over the top of another skull. And it's been kind of a pain every time I've done it. The problem that what's hard with skulls is uh, everybody knows what a skull is supposed to look like, right? So if you screw up, everybody sees that screw up and they can tell that the skull doesn't look, you know, we know what, but when you're doing stuff like this, if the bind doesn't twist right or the head's kind of shaped, misshaped, it doesn't matter, right? This is a creature that no one's seen before, and the creepier it is, the better it is. So all your screw-ups are little, like, Bob Ross are uh, happy accidents. Just go along with it. Um, Axman says, do it on YouTube and Facebook. I don't have Facebook. And Jim says, got to head to work. Project looking great. I'll have to catch the replay. Have a great night. Right on. Hey, Jim. Thanks for hanging out for a little bit, brother. Go beat down some bad guys. Is he the one that won the pumpkin? Yes, Jim won the pumpkin. And he's a patron. Um, and I, I'm not sure he's a, he's a peacekeeper as well. Hmm. So... So what are you doing now? So now what I'm doing is um, I'm just using mache paste and this is just a cheap little paintbrush from Walmart or whatever. And I'm basically just adding a bunch of paste in here and smoothing this stuff out, blending it together. So it looks like, I don't know if you can tell how much kind of smoother that's going and how rough it is here. So we can move, I can move and manipulate the clay with this a little bit and pull it. Not as much as I can with toilet paper clay, but with this, I can still pull it around a little bit. It looks smooth now, but this stuff really kind of shrinks up. And but when it shrinks up, it makes it just makes this cool tree viney texture stuff. So that's why I opted to do um, egg carton clay instead of toilet paper clay. Um, Charlotte says, I love little tabletop miniatures for indoor decoration. And Keith said, would love to see a live painting session. I've used some of your painting techniques on my pieces. Right on. 
I um, a lot of the painting a lot of painting techniques I use for the most part all have to do with brushes and doing those highlights. So you really do you can paint from like I paint from dark to light and add a bunch of detail in, but you can paint from light to dark too, just kind of your preference. Uh, when I paint this thing, there'll be a little bit of hand painting. And then, like I said, we're going to do, um, I'm going to try those new paints with my airbrush and see how they work out. Because um, if it works out well, airbrush is so much faster, so much quicker. Says, shrinking is good. Shrinking is good. Uh, dependent. Sometimes it took me a Here's the biggest thing with uh, paper mache and any kind of paper mache clay because there's always there's always quite a bit of shrinking in it. And I know that there's shrinking in everything, but a lot of times mache clay shrinks up a whole lot. So the big thing when you're doing any kind of mache project and using mache clay like all those features like if you're doing the face or anything else you need to exaggerate all that stuff like much bigger like cheeks bigger lips all the all those things got to be like way bigger almost cartoony especially if you're going for something halfway realistic because by the time all that moisture sucks out of there that really shrinks down so you have to build it bigger to know that when it shrinks down you still have the look you're going for because if you if you don't over exaggerate it and then you're just messing with it and you're like oh that looks perfect that's what i like that's what i want as soon as that stuff dries up and you come back and look at it you're going to be mad because it's not what it was when you left it what are you doing rufus huh um axman said bob ross was a great one i'm a 70s kid and charlotte says i also paint from dark to light gives it more dimension i think yeah i can agree with that I like dark to light. And yeah, I watched a lot of Bob Ross back in the day when he was uh, on TV and you were kind of a, Bob Ross wasn't the end thing to do, right? You were kind of more of a geek. I just thought his painting was really cool. He made it look super easy. Poor dog. This is his Bubba. He just wants attention. Yeah, he just wants a bunch of attention. We're talking about our dog, by the way. <laughs> yeah, my boy's dog is down here. He's got, he had a, his dog is like part, part bird dog, and I swear boxer or whatever. But those two really, over the years, were buddies, right? They really become buddies. And since he took off and went to the Marines, his boy hasn't been here anymore, and he kind of, He's kind, of He's kind of still trying to figure out why his boy hasn't come back from work yet. Doesn't know what's going on. Yeah, Charlotte. I also watch Bob Ross live. I'm old, LOL. Yeah, we're all old. It's fine. <laughs> right on. And then, right up. You get a crackled look with the egg carton clay. Yes. So, yeah, kind of a. I don't have. I don't have anything down here dry. I got my. I have another project upstairs. I've been working on. It's another video that's going to come out soon. Um, it it really makes this cool crackled look to it. That really kind of when you're talking about viney stuff and like tree stuff, it's like a cool bark texture almost. Mm -hmm. It's really really neat. Um, that was when I came across egg carton clay and I first started doing this. Uh, the egg carton clay is like super easy to make. It's way less intense than the toilet paper clay. However, you can't get fine details with it. It always does this kind of weird crackly stuff. So it's good for bulking. Like if you're going to throw um, uh, mache, strip mache or something over the top of it and you want to bulk some things out, it really works good for that. Uh, but then again, you know, if you're going to do this wood textures, whatever and stuff, it works really good. Uh, with that, too, I've seen people do, um, like, miniature houses and things like that, and they use it to make, um, like, landscaping with, like, rocks and stuff. Um, and it's always turned out, from what I've seen, it's always turned out pretty cool, too. Um, so, with that. Axman says, same thing with sculpting masks in weekly? 
Wed clay. Wed clay? Yeah. What, okay, I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, what am I saying? Sorry. Um, heavy detail is the trick. And then Charlotte, I just found out I'm going to be a great grandma. Yay. And Psycho Axe Man, $50. What? <laughs> I like to throw that stuff. Dude, right. thank you, brother. And I appreciate that. And yeah, uh, hang on. Okay. Congratulations <laughs> on great grandmother. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Congratulations on that. And I, I was. Uh, I was always kind of curious, like, I played with a little bit of clay. I've done some polymer clay and stuff in the past or whatever, and I was really curious whether how much that stuff shrunk down, you know, because it's a uh, – I always tell myself that I'm stupid for doing this <laughs> because I played with some clay, and, and clay is – I can control, you can control it so much easier than this stuff, right? And get those different details and everything with, but I just, I don't know. I like, I still like this. I like this old school paper mache. You're just using crap uh, and can make something, right? Because I was always a, I was always broke. And this allowed me to be able to make something. It's totally not my fault. He's always broke, by the way. It's totally her fault that I'm always <laughs> broke. Uh huh. Totally, totally, totally. Okay, I don't know. What? Recycling is the best? I don't know about that. But what? I missed it. Same thing. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, boy. Uh, I, bon night. Was that good night? It's and, uh, Andrea. Andrea Valentine. Val so I don't know what that says. Bonati. I don't, I don't know. Sorry, guys. We suck. I'm, I wish I knew. If anyone knows, let me know. Yeah, clay's great, dude. I played with it a little bit, but I just keep I keep running back to this. I don't know. I, sometimes I just feel like this is a lost art type of deal. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of other things that I need to learn on. And I've seen there's some of these artists out here that oh, do mm -hmm. paper mache that do some like oh. crazy awesome stuff. Like I've seen some just wild things and people have done things with like strip mache in different directions that i never even thought of um so i find it inspiring i find a lot of inspiration in a lot of different people The only thing with this is I'm going to saturate this so much with mache paste, smoothing this out, that this is going to take forever to dry out. This is going to be an easy. Yeah, it means good evening. Good evening. Right on. Who, who told me that? Who? Question. Why did you pick this art? Psycho accident. All right. So why did I pick this art? Here's the honest to God truth why I picked this art. Uh, I've been decorating my house for Halloween for years and years and years. Um, ever since I was like 14 years old, I got into doing it. Uh, I wanted cool stuff and I never had the money like back. This will get my age. Like here we are back when I was a kid, we didn't have spirit of Halloween. Right. So the closest thing to spirit of Halloween was, uh, Spencer's in the mall. So around Halloween time, Spencer's would have like these cool masks and all this different stuff. Um, really neat junk, but I never had the money to buy that stuff. Um, so I wanted to make my own. Uh, one year I wanted to make a gargoyle for the top of the house. And I remembered I did a little strip mache and, um, uh what was it spanish classes we made <laughs> we made some pinatas so i went out and got some uh chicken wire and stuff and made uh made a gargoyle and i thought he was pretty cool and it was 
that was actually pretty ugly. But anyway, I thought it was cool. Uh, just did strip mache on it, and I did uh, uh, well, uh, just spray paint. I thought spray paint was sealed up. I made this gargoyle, spent all this time on it, went and put him on my roof, put lights in him. It was actually kind of neat. And then the rainstorm came and destroyed it. So I was just kind of like, hmm. So I backed away from him a little bit. And then after a while, I seen some guys like, uh, what was it, Spooky Blue or something like that? That's right. There was a website, Spooky Blue or something, where they were making some things with Mache. It was pretty cool. Then uh, Pumpkin Rot was hot on the scene with his stuff. And I realized he was doing some things with Mache. Uh, Dan Reeder, who does the uh, dragons and things, that was cool. And then uh, uh, Stalloween was making some really awesome stuff. And these guys were doing things with Mache. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give this another try. And then so, but back in that time, man, I had to research, like, to try to even figure out how to, the paper clay recipe was hard to come by and whether or not how to waterproof mache and all that stuff. That was like, no one had any advice on that stuff that I could figure out. Most people I followed was just like mache was kind of a, inside type thing um i got a background as a gearhead building motorcycles and doing stuff like that so basically after being a little bit smarter about stuff i just started trying different sealers i just realized and the, the big thing that really turned me on to it was figuring out uh paper clay and the first paper clay recipe i came across was uh joni with uh, ultimatepapermache.com. Uh, so she had that toilet paper recipe. But she just had used um, white PVA glue and stuff. And I tried it, her recipe, and I was like, really like, I fell in love with how I could sculpt it. And I thought that was super cool because uh, it didn't leave, you know, you could hide all the wrinkles or hide all the edges with your. Um, strip mache and then once i kind of played with that and thought this is super awesome that's when i started changing things around i've got buddies in construction i mean we're talking this has been over the past 14 years or so uh that's when i got turned on to type bond 2 wood glue because it's got some uh properties in it that are a little more waterproof so i started playing with that uh, and doing some tests to see if it would hold up and then Neverwet came out. I played with Neverwet for a little while to see if that would really kind of do it. And started using the spar thing. Anyway. You're long-winded. I'm super long-winded. Um, <laughs> it all started psycho because I wanted cool stuff. And I couldn't afford cool stuff. I couldn't buy cool stuff. I couldn't afford latex. I couldn't afford all the clay to sculpt my own things. But back in the day, I could afford some flour, some white glue, and some water. And all of a sudden, I could start making things that were in my head. And I didn't have to order stuff and spend a lot of money on it. That's that's how I started in this stuff. And I just kind of never looked back. All right. So I've got a lot to say. Loretta, I make Zelda shields and other medieval shields out of cardboard and paper mache. Psycho Axman says it's a beautiful art. Charlotte, my grandkids like to come help me put out my Halloween decor every year. Right on. Axman, exactly. That's why I'm watching. She's a great one. Um, Psycho Axman. Uh, Wendy, I use bathroom waterproofing membrane on my stuff before painting. Or pond cellar or Ooh, more texture. Those are all good ideas. And Charlotte, she is great to watch also. I think they're much. That's talking about yeah. Joni, yeah. And he gave you 50 again and he has thumbs up. Did you catch that? He's something else. I don't know. He's, he's pretty amazing. He, he he really likes you. I really uh, appreciate it, man. I I really, really do. I appreciate the support. I don't I don't expect it, but I do really appreciate it. Uh, because here, here's my end goal, really. 
my day job is AC work. Uh, but my end goal is to be able to do this and do classes and show you guys how to make this stuff and make a small living doing this and get out of the field, being in the heat all the time and dealing with all this. Um, For the cold? Heat and cold and dealing with dealing with AC work. It gets strenuous, man. It's hard on the body. It really is. Last night was a last night was a long night. Didn't get home till seven o'clock. It was a rough, rough one. And I enjoyed this. This this stuff makes me happy to do this stuff. Carla, I like making bristle brushes on for texture on my bangs. Oh bristle. yeah, right on. Mm-hmm. Excuse me while I'm taking an adult beverage. Man, this stuff's starting to stick to my hands. What is the clay? Yeah, a little bit of the clay. That uh, that type bomb three is aggressive. Have you not used that one before? No, I've never. It's it was always quite a bit more expensive than type bomb two. Yeah, like I used, and here's the thing too, right? I used just a standard wood glue once and not type bond. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong thing. And um, to make clay with, and it was just like, I think it was just Elmer's glue, wood glue is what it was. And when I used that, that turned my clay rubbery. Like it was hard to work with. It wasn't any good. And I was actually afraid that this Type Bond 3 was going to do the same thing. Um, but it hasn't. So far, this doesn't have any kind of rubbery texture to it. So... It still acts like the other stuff. It's just way more aggressive on my fingers. It really wants to stick to it a lot. And I know I could use like uh, I could use like gloves and stuff, but even when I I was a gearhead and worked as a mechanic for a long time too, and I just if I don't have the feel on my fingers, um. I can't handle it, so I don't use gloves because I like to fill everything with my fingers when I'm working on it. Okay, so Charlotte was saying that she could use a Corona with wine. Have you ever tried this? I keep doing the wrong one, too. I like this one. I like it better. I don't know. I never really drink those very much, so I'm not sure, but it's going to be stunning when it's done. Excellent. He just loves it. It's gonna. This thing's going to be pretty cool when it's all finished up. I think I'm already pretty happy, but man, I don't know that. I don't think that shrunk anymore. No, but I don't. When did the other one shrink? So the other ones, that one that shrank up real bad, I didn't coat it with anything. And then when I painted it, it lasted for like uh, two months or so, and then it started shrinking and then it shriveled up into nothing. That one, I, coat, I still got to coat the bottom of that with the paper mache paste, and then I'll need to start painting it and then we'll watch it from there to see if it starts to shrink if it, if this pumpkin shrinks then this this was a whole <laughs> this is a whole waste of time nope echo accident says only happy accidents man right on yeah i'll pull that <laughs> pumpkin off then and replace it with something else what is he doing baby it's too big that's what happens that was my model for a lot long time too didn't if things messed up or broke whatever didn't matter you can just I mean, with mache you don't have a lot of money involved in it you cut that crap apart start over again or add something else to it i mean i've had projects that i've had pretty well finished and even painted and didn't like the way it looked and just cut into it and changed it okay. afterwards uh charlotte says is that going in your cemetery not, um, if, not if Axman has anything to do with it. Yes, if Axman has anything to do with it, it's going to be at his house. <laughs> uh, but yes, the goal is to make about five or six of these little guys and add them to the yard this year. I want to do a bunch of twisted pumpkin stuff this year. Um, I dig pumpkins, man. I dig pumpkins and flat cats and witches and graveyards and stuff. To me, that's that's Halloween. I feel like those getting too thick. 
You're messing with my mic. I'm this. sorry. I'm trying not to pick it up anymore because it's <laughs> sticking to the bottom down here. And I don't want to mess it up. I need a lazy Susan. You took mine from upstairs. But that thing, that old cheap thing was like rough. It's hard to spin. Like I need a good one. Loretta says that is a good dream goal. I was teaching buses in my mother's. Oh. Sorry, it keeps pulling up all these other ones. I can't. What? Ceramic? That's it. Yes. Why is I can't say it. I don't know. So she was teaching the classes in her mother's shop um, when I was 12 and still working towards my dream goal in paper mache. And then Miss Davis, I think. Miss Davis, uh, are you going to put a light in the pumpkin or a spotlight or a question mark? And then Charlotte, I love my big pumpkin with the gorilla looking face. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, this pumpkin's not getting any light in him. Um, he made a foam. Eh? He's solid foam, and if I was going to light him up, uh, I should have done that beforehand and went ahead. Because for me, so if I was going to light him up and actually do lighting, I was trying, trying to throw this together as a fast one. And so the other ones I make, I may do. So what I would have done is kind of hauled some stuff out first. And then I would have hid all the wiring inside the stem and probably made something down on the base for the batteries, whatever to go to, where I could done an on and off switch. I've done that with one of my pumpkins in the past. It's pretty cool. Um, so this guy, no, he's going to be like this. He would have to have a spotlight on him to make him shine up. Uh, but absolutely, other ones, I'll probably get some like LED things or whatever and make, um, make them light up. The biggest goal with this guy was, is I already knew I wanted to do some cool little things like this because this is smaller. It's going to be harder to see. You're not going to see it until you're actually in the yard. Uh, I want some filler stuff, but then the big thing was, is I didn't have a lot of content for the channel, so I was like, I need to do something, and I was like, I think I can whip this out in one night on just the uh, armature. So I went live with it, and some of you right, guys follow along. I mean, if you keep it, then you would put a spotlight on it. Though. If I kept this and this sets out into the yard because he doesn't have any lights in his head, he would be under some kind of LED spot um, <laughs> to light him up to bring attention to him. Um, Axman says you need a three-quarter in plywood base with a lazy Susan. I use that for sculpting masks. And Charlotte says you can teach us to make great big spray foam pumpkins. And Axman says you could do glow in the dark paint inside it. Yeah, glow in the dark paint would work. We have done that before. I could do some spray foam pumpkins, but here's the, um, I could do like all kinds of different stuff like we talked about before, but man, I really try to stay with mache. I just, I do. Like I've got, like I could make, we can make all kinds of cool stuff out of metal and make armatures and do all this different stuff and make pneumatics or whatever. I've got a, I have a mechanical background and doing building motorcycles and building cars and doing all this other stuff. I've done it for years. Um, but I really try to stay with on this channel and everything else with mache because this is one thing that it doesn't matter, honestly, how broke you get or whatever happens with society or whatever, you know, whatever inflation. What If you want to make something, if you can get some flour and some water and a little bit of glue, then you can make whatever your heart desires out of your head. And it doesn't cost you out the rear. It may not turn out the way you want it at first, but that's what practice is all about. And playing with stuff more and more and more because i sucked at this when i started i'll admit i, I was <laughs> my first step was horrible 
But I thought it was so cool. Like, I was super like, ah, check this out. I just made this. And I go back and look at some of my older stuff, and I'm like, oh, my God. How was I even happy that I made that? But that's just kind of how things go. All right. So all the creepers are pie. Who? Crawly Creeper. Crawly Creeper. What's up? Oh, gosh. And I'm using stuff. Um, Axman says, it's your chill point. I'm like that when I paint. And Charlotte, I need more mache miniatures, creatures for indoor de decor. And Davis, birthday. do you think could attach the wire to a PVC pipe or pole of some kind to make a collar? Attach before the paper mache, maybe a two-piece with some kind of attachment to make them tall. I've got to reread that. That's okay. I know. Do you think you attach wire to a BBC pipe? Some kind of yes, absolutely. You could make them taller. And I'm going to, I've got, uh, I have some different pumpkins uh, and some plans to make a thing like this that's much taller that has like three or four heads all on it and stuff. So that's, that's all stuff to come in the future that I'll have like um, pre-recorded videos that I'm going to make for the channel that's going to be on there. But absolutely, because you do some of these, get them tall, get them going on. You can make tall ones, you want them to stand out, then you want to make some big old full-size pumpkins on there so those things stand out. And then you could have like multiple heads, right? You could have some like little pumpkin heads kind of sticking off on of, the lower little branch type things or vine type things and that type of stuff. You can make some pretty cool. Loretta says it's looking great. You're very inspirational. I have to put to go put I have to go put kid. I'm assuming to bed. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like it gets cut off or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, some of them may be. So yeah. Okay. Well thanks for coming. Right on. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for talking. Axman, that's a really good question. How tall is this? <laughs> uh, he's a little over two foot. Let's see, where's your... So he's not super big. I don't have a tape measure down here, but I can tell you he's to the top of the stem here. He's probably like at two foot, if not just a little bit, uh, a little bit over two foot. He's not uh, super big by any means. But I want to make a couple of these that are like um, four or five foot tall, you know. He's kind of really up there that you can really see from the road. Uh, do you have a tutorial for hands coming out of the ground for my cemetery, Charlotte? Um, and then I can says perfect. Uh, awesome. Thanks, Axeman. Charlotte, I have a tutorial on making hands from uh, paper mache, paper mache clay, and you're using like uh, water bottles and some PVC pipe and things like that. You could take that tutorial and absolutely adapt that to hands coming out of the ground because the bottom of them was left open with a piece of PVC that's in there that you could set like a piece of rebar on. Because I basically did that tutorial to make hands just like from the wrist, like right in here up, that you would attach to a dummy um, outside. So because like my witches and stuff that are out there, I have paper mache heads and then I have paper mache hands and stuff. And then everything else is just filler like um, pool noodles and stuff for arms or whatever and the clothes draped over it. And then anything that you can see, wrist, hands, head, neck, all that stuff. Um, then I have mache props that do that. So you can absolutely, the uh, the how to make hands from paper mache tutorial, it's on the, on the page. You can absolutely take those and make them and use them for hands coming out of the ground. For sure. Do you know the name of that hand tutorial? I think it's just how to make paper mache hands, I think. Um, Your phone's behind you. You need me to throw up? Hang on, we'll see. 
Do, do, do. Do. I'm not surprised it's still. Let's go Can't to my stuff. channel. Videos. Ooh, I don't know if I have that in the playlist or not. I bet it is in the playlist too. Uh, whoa, slow down. There's the bat. There's the trick or treat basket. Joker head. Okay, so the hand tutorial. So it is one, two, three. It's a three video thing. So it's three separate videos. Uh, the first one is how to make hands from paper mache part one. And then you've got how to make hands from paper mache part two. Real original titles. And then um, making hands from paper mache. See, I changed it a little bit. Making hands from paper mache <laughs> part two. Three. Uh, those are all done five years ago. If you either look them up, I, are they in my playlist? Let's see if they're in my playlist. Okay, so if you go to, like, if you're actually, when this is over, if you go to my channel and you click on playlists, you will find a playlist that's just as hands from paper mache. And that will give you all three of those videos. And you can just start in on part one and watch them the rest of the way through and you'll get it all the way to the end to to uh paint and everything else so hopefully that helped out all right so i have i'm planting a small corn pumpkin patch in the yard to use for halloween decorating uh these would be cool in it small and large ones i'm excited to try making some and then she says i'm currently working on Making hands like your video is coming along. Right um, on. Charlotte says thanks and yay. Right on, right on, right on. I feel like I'm rushing this and not getting a lot of detail. And I got, so I got you guys going on. We got some company over here. Um, Carrie's still doing She's this. She's not company. She's my best friend. She's just part of our family. Bestie's over here. <laughs> yeah. And they're both probably <laughs> like, gosh dang it shut up and just get this thing going so we can no, do other not. stuff excellent says i wonder if you want to ship this across the country is there any way to take the top portion off then reattach it question mark could be done maybe not uh, not this one no because since i started with that uh that shepherd took that wire. I don't have a way to cut it apart and then make it work and come back together again. If had this been like a half inch PVC or something up to maybe here, I could have put it all together, painted it even, cut it apart, made a connector in it, and then made it where it kind of went back together again where you couldn't see the seam. That would have worked. Um, that's how I did a I did a big scarecrow jack. There's even a video on it, kind of like how it puts together that uh, another Barry Flanagan purchased from me and that thing was uh was 10 foot tall from top to bottom and i made it at halfway in the middle it broke apart and then it had chest and all that so the the arms came off of it the torso came off of it and then you had this bottom piece on it and then i even made it with a hinge because he put it on a deal that would come down like this that project was pretty cool it came apart um but i had to Anything that I'm going to do, if it's going to come apart, I've got to pre-think about that and build that in at the very beginning, or I'm basically screwed. Okay, so the all I see, didn't know this, I have a couple more, but Charlotte's going to leave. So I've got to get to bed, 3 a.m., comes early, um, correctional officer job starts early, lol. We'll finish watching on replay. Thanks, Charlotte, for coming. Thanks for being here, Charlotte. Well, it's only four hours. You know, so maybe four hours drive, you know, Axman would be okay for you to come get it if, you know. Oh, that's a four-hour drive. Dang. Yeah, I had kind of like that. Yeah, um, it was so had to be. I know. Shipped. Uh, what is the best type of paint to use on them for weatherproofing? Which is not really the paint you weatherproof it with, though, right? Correct. So here's what I do. Um... When this gets all done and this is dried up, I'll consider it raw, right? So once it's all dried up, then I will use, I will paint on a layer of spar urethane over the top of this to weather seal it. 
from that point on, then you can, use, uh, I would suggest spraying on like a primer after that because a primer will give you a better bite. Um, but once you give it like a, some spar urethane, then prime it or something to give it a bite so your colors should stick to it. Then I use acrylic paints after that to give it color. Once I'm done with color and acrylic paints, then I once again hit it with spar urethane after the color's done. And if the spar urethane's too shiny and I don't like the way that looks, then I will spray like a matte clear uh, spray paint over it to knock the shine off. Some things I leave shiny because I like the way that looks. But it's really so where the paste has got the um, tight bond in it that helps waterproof it. In the beginning, then we do a spar urethane on it. Then I paint and then I spar urethane it again. Uh, I've also used, instead of spar urethane in the past, which works pretty good, is that. Um, ah. No, it's in a spray, and it was pretty popular there for a while. Um, you can still get it. It had infomercials everywhere. Oh, um, um, Flex Seal. <laughs> so I've sprayed them with Flex Seal. Flex Seal works pretty good, too. If you got super fine, fine details, that, that Flex Seal will kind of clog those details up. But Flex Seal works really well. Um, Excellent. That could be a really cool selling point for your products, if you could. Oh, break them down. Yeah, that's it. Could be, but my goal isn't to sell, right? I want to teach. That's my goal. I got most people wouldn't pay for this stuff. The amount of time that it takes for me to mache this and worry about it and everything else, they're not a lot of these projects will have two or three hundred hours in them. This one's not going to. This one, well, this will still have. By the time this thing's said and done, this is a shorter one. We worked a couple hours the other night, right? That was like yeah. two and a half hours, something like that. Two, we're going to be a couple hours again. So we're going to be four, five hours into this part. And then once we dress, so I might have six to ten hours. This could be sold at a reasonable price. But a lot of my other stuff just has a ton of hours in it. And I've sold some things, but, man, I just really, I'd really rather teach I'd really be, rather be on YouTube here, having cool people show support like Psycho Axe Man and do it and this way. And everyone else. And everyone else. And all my patrons, they, man, that helps me out a lot. Eventually, I want to do a little book, write a little book on how to do this so people can purchase that and not just have to look at YouTube videos because who knows, sometimes your internet might, might not be working. So if you had an actual book, to look at and read that could help out so those are my goals but i mean if you know that you're gonna sell something to someone like you did if i had someone friend, that really wanted me to to yes you, to, you would have already probably done something if i have someone that wants me to build something and we talk about it and agree on the price or whatever then yes i would still kind of do some of that stuff I was just saying that four hours away actually probably might be cheaper than shipping it. <laughs> That's all I was getting out of it. That's a long way. drive, though. You meet new people and um, you get an awesome thing to put in his garden. And he thinks a book would be great. Yeah, I think a book would be cool and fun. I'm doing like a podcast or something. I mean, basically, this is kind of what it's like. <laughs> I could do this. I'd say though, I'm not witty. No, oh, you just got the right combination of people. Witty. You mean Krenda? Mm-hmm. Man, I should have got a jar. Of, <laughs> yeah, I should have filled my bowl awesome. up with water. <laughs> You so need can, me to do something for no, you? No, you don't need to do it. I'll deal with it. It's okay. I don't mind. My hands are just getting gummy. <laughs> gummy, gummy, gummy. Okay. You need some lotion. Right. We've got lotion. Huh. 
Um, I think I'm going to clay those. When these that's two. right, it got ripped off and Chance likes to bite on it whenever they play. So. Yeah, so that dog collar has been like repaired 14,000 times. Sorry, we got a whole other conversation going on over here. That I don't know if you guys can hear or not. But, but just a question how much you can sell this for when you're done? Who is asking Axman. that? Axman. Uh, uh, if I was going to sell it, like I used to do some Third Thursday stuff or whatever. So if I had this thing all done up or whatever, I would probably ask like. 120 to maybe 150 dollars that might be too much i don't know but that's probably <laughs> where maybe it's worth more i don't have any idea but that's probably i'd say probably the 150 area is what i would call it that maybe i may be thinking that my stuff's too fucking cool so that maybe <laughs> anyway and that's what sucks too because i have sold some stuff in the past right and i made some pretty cool crap in the past and all the super cool stuff i made is i don't own it went somewhere else i don't have it in my yard for halloween and some of that sucks okay i don't know if you already said this or not but what is the difference between the egg carton clay toilet paper clay insulation clay i have only worked with insulation clay all right so here's the difference between all three of those number one egg carton clay is super easy to make okay it is just egg cartons broke down saturated in water then blended up wrung wrong out and then you add glue to it so super easy to make however it's pretty I mean, you can do your balls and stuff with it, like, but it's it's chunky, right? Shrinks up quite a bit, and you can't get fine detail with this because it's there's too much like cardboard in here, so it makes it real hard to get fine detail with. The insulation clay, uh, I made that stuff too. It's another clay that's great for bulking. It does well for bulking, or if you're going to do some kind of big face or head or whatever a big pumpkin where all your features and details are bigger you don't need fine fine details in it that works great for that your toilet paper clay your tp clay is a much finer um clay it's i guess closest to like clay you'd buy it's never that close to like standard clays or whatever but you can get really fine details with toilet paper clay. I mean, real fine details. A lot finer details than you can ever get with this stuff. So that's the biggest difference. If I'm gonna do something that I wanna put little bitty fine details in, I will use toilet paper clay. If I'm trying to bulk things or I wanna do stuff fast, then I'll use this egg carton clay. Just like this stem, this being a vine, it's not gonna need a bunch of details. And as a matter of fact, I'm not even gonna carve in any um, lines into this to make viney details because when this dries and shrinks up it's going to make its own texture to it and it turns out good so i'm going to let it let let it do its thing right what is insulation clay what is insulation clay you buy uh go to, to uh home depot or wall uh home depot or uh lowe's or whatever there's this it's called cellulose i can't even say it cellulose <laughs> insulation and that insulation is basically it's like paper it's old paper that's been recycled and stuff so it might be newspapers and stuff that's been all kind of shredded up and all this stuff uh, it's pretty cheap and working and people use it to blow in it's a blow in what they use for up in their attics um so you can turn it into uh clay in the britain when i made it i saw ween has a specific recipe for his uh clay and that's what he uses to that stuff when i made it basically what i did was took the toilet paper clay recipe and just made it the same so using toilet paper i used um i used that insulation instead of toilet paper and that's how i changed it around um, to pop off. You're, you're such an artist i'm the same way with masks i never want to part with it because it's never perfect but someone might look at it and go damn that's perfection 
And I said that is that so true. I agree. I mean, like all artists feel the same way. That is so true. Uh, Wendy says, "Okay, don't think we have that stuff in Australia." Hmm. Oh, you Never might not. Uh, I don't even have a picture. Yeah. Man, I bet you do. I mean, because that stuff's pretty popular. I would. They sell it in kind of like they call a bell or whatever. It's like a. It's wrapped in plastic and it actually looks like square bell um but it's just it's it's recycled paper is what it is um it doesn't have any fiberglass in it or anything else so it doesn't make you itchy or any of that junk it's literally recycled paper you got another 50 for the cost <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore with that. Besides, I appreciate it. You're amazing, brother. Um, I just. That's why I say four hour drive isn't that bad. <laughs> He's kind of getting thick right here. I'm put that on a little too heavy. Great, you messed it up. <laughs> yeah, well. It'll shrink some too. Okay. It's not like bad. Are you going to put the clay on the leaves as well? I think I'm going to. I, I was thinking about just wrapping it in some um, paper towels that I don't have because the dog ate them all. Um, but I might do like a thin, thin, thin layer of clay. See, right now, I'm really wetting this clay down because I felt like I got it too thick up here. And I'm using the brush to push and manipulate that clay up higher. Oh, yeah. You guys can't see up there, huh? Let's see about this. Oh, is that better? Now we can see the top. The only problem with pushing that up is, see that you even get it and get stuck in your brush. You gotta kind of get that out of there. The only thing that was rough about life is I wish I could just play music, <laughs> but I can't do that. No. YouTube would give me a copyright strike. Brenda could sing for you. If she sings anything that's normal. <laughs> So people know I'll get a copyright <laughs> strike. Really? If it's for singing? Yep. Yeah, Absolutely. they can't, yeah, they can't like do anything. They can't even, yeah, say any kind of lyrics from a song and you'll get copy, copyrighted. Yeah, you got sucks. some back over here, babe. What's that? I dropped some. Yeah, some. Okay. I don't know if I'll hurt it. It'll but... be okay. I'll get it in a second. I'll get it off of there. Don't think of a song that will copyright it. <laughs> and see that's what's right like if i was just listening to music in the background i'm not trying to people aren't coming here to listen to the music because i'm playing music they're coming to watch this so i just happen to be in the background that's bs that i get copyright strike for that well everybody feels the same on stuff. yeah everybody does um do you ever have things break when i'm playing okay Paste. Not paste. Yeah, paste. Yes. <laughs> All the time. All the freaking time I have crap break. Because I didn't make it strong enough or whatever. Oh, you should see him messing with this secret that he hasn't put not put out there yet. And he has been fighting that stupid thing and he's so frustrated with it. It was supposed to come out at Easter and never did. Yeah, I have the if it breaks after it's dry, it's a little bit easier to deal with. But man, that's like, I've got this. I've been making this. Uh, I've been making this evil, evil Easter bunny rabbit. And I was going to try to have this thing done for an Easter video to come out before Easter hit. Anyway, I made him where he's like all standing upright. But then I did the whole legs where like, the legs come off and kind of went at an angle like this. And then they came back like this. And then they came up and he's all like 
super skinny. You can see his ribs and stuff. And when I'm done, he's going to be like barely, he's going to have hair and patches. And But anyway, besides the point, um, <laughs> I didn't do a strong enough armature on that stupid thing. And I've had the legs sag and I've had them break and I've had them put them back together and wrap them tighter and add more crap to it. And I've had the claws break off of it. I've had so much stuff go wrong with that stupid rabbit. Um, yeah, dude, it just, it happens, right? And you just, you're either, you just put, I don't know, you push through or you just whatever, give up on it. I almost threw that thing up against the wall the other day because it made me so mad. Um, but he's <laughs> close to being done. And I don't even know what I'm going to do with it when it's done because he's, so, he's too weak. I'll never be able to put him out in the yard. Um, okay, so you're talking just a lot. Whatever. Yeah, I'm talking a lot. I'm, I'm interested in learning how to make things using molds and foam. Want to learn how to make molds too. Did you make a mold before? I made a mold. I made. I got some molds down there. Um, I made them with cheap uh, silicone, not anything that was professional and stuff you bought and did. But I'm not like I'm not super good with that junk. I've done like Psycho could probably tell you more about that stuff than I could. I played with some molding a little bit. I've kind of thought about doing some because here's the thing: if you have molds, right? Um, you can literally take paper clay and pack it into a mold and it'll dry and you can pull the mold back off again and you can you can make stuff with paper mache. You can use that clay just like as if you were pouring latex or something in it and you can make you can use molds to make paper mache stuff. Uh, so that's the reason I even did some molds back in the past. Um, but I bet it, the molds would be a lot better if I used a higher quality silicone and all that type of stuff. But I'm really not, I don't have enough experience in it to sit here and do a tutorial and tell you that this is the right way to do it because I haven't done enough of them. And there's a lot of other people out there that are much better mold makers than I am. That's for sure. It's all a part of art, but you remember it. That's a cool memory. <sighs> Whack. Yeah, I can agree with that. <laughs> I can totally agree with that. Are you able to use the paper mache item to make a mold of it? Yes. So uh, the actual mold that I casted or that I made that that's a latex mold. I oh, that was loud. Sorry, I made a paper mache pumpkin first, and then I uh, did uh, the latex mold around it, and then pulled it. Uh, not latex, but uh, silicone. So it and it worked. I imagine if you use clay that could bust apart, it'd be. I had a hard time uh, demolding it at first, getting that off there. But yeah, I was able to do it. But I did. Uh, I did spray it down with the, like a gloss clear coat first so it would release better. Yeah, they're probably dying to go outside. Don't say that on your keyword. <laughs> I'm getting this too thick up here. It doesn't look that good. You totally thinned it out a lot. Make it you can see a bump go through. Well, that's like a bump can be there. That's fine too. Right. I'm just saying. So if you thinned it out, you're just going to see, don't you? You're so short. And I'm going to put some little <laughs> vines coming off the top. I, once I do these kind of little vines on the top, I'll try to. I'll try to move this camera over here so you can see what I've done. Um, the camera's way over there. Mm -hmm. Where's all my 
my stuff back. Maybe that'll work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's not the one I want. That's not really the one I want. Where's my small mm-hmm. spoon tool? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Brian's bagging your tools again. Yeah, I probably need to pick up some more tools. And even with this clay, I mean, you can use like actual. What in the world? <laughs> <laughs> They're playing with the, um, the eggs. You can actually use sculpting tools with this stuff, too. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I got cats running around the other room um, playing with stuff. Okay, let's get some. Psycho Axeman is explaining the mold stuff. Right on. Thanks, dude. Because I am not, I am not an ace at mold making. Yeah, I saw a couple of his videos and it was pretty cool. Mm. What he makes and stuff. Now the only problem is that I am running out of room to hold on to this thing. I guess I can hold on the pumpkin. That'll work. Until it falls. The pumpkin shouldn't fall off. I know, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm worried about him shrinking, but I'm not worried about him really falling I wonder off. if the cat's found the new toy yet. What new toy? That one. The one you bought today. Oh, the cat deal? Mm -hmm. I maybe, the, maybe that's why she's freaking out, because I put catnip all <laughs> over. So she may be, like, supercharged. That might be her issue. She's like, whoa, dude. If we only knew how it really affected him. I think it gets them high. I'm sorry. I think catnip is marijuana for cats. I don't know. That's my opinion I mean, on I've it. I've seen some videos of some cats who had too much and they're like. I <laughs> <laughs> um, said no worries about sharing, I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, I appreciate that because I don't. We just appreciate you. You're so helpful in many ways. <laughs> that cat is high, LOL. Uh, <laughs> You're probably right. I think so. Well, why did you put catnip all over it? Because it came with catnip to get to attract him to it. So yeah. I put catnip. I put catnip in my. I put the cat entire cat. bag on that thing. <laughs> everywhere yeah well but then we have one cat that she like freaked out and started hissing at yeah she, <laughs> she's like i put no. her on and she hissed at it maybe she's she had a bad trip she said um don't do drugs kids yes it's because she's the mom of half of them <laughs> i feel like that almost sticking that up too much at the top you really thinned it out baby i don't think it looks bad Our conversations are hilarious. Like we get off so much. Oh well. Sorry. Did you stop being loud. so loud? I need some roller chairs. The chairs have got wheels on them. Yeah, these are my dining chairs. They shouldn't be up here. Down here. Well, they goes. When I redo it, do them. You can't have them anymore. Let's see. I need a smaller brush. And here, I sacrifice like all my brushes. That's why I hide mine from him. Like, I buy brushes to paint with, and here's... But I don't ever buy, like, high-end brushes. I do. Because here's what happens. When I buy brushes and I paint with them and all that stuff's cool, and then I'm doing crap like this, and I'll go grab another brush, because and I'm sacrificing this brush to my mache paste. And, uh, yeah. So, it, uh, a lot of times I ruin them. But, yay. Okay. So, let's see if I can do this. Uh, yeah, all right. So, here, what I'm gonna do, yeehaw, I'm going to brush some paste on top of this so that it makes it tacky. Yeah, that cat is stone. Uh, anyway, I'm going to brush some shape paste on the top of the head here, then I'm going to use some small pieces of clay and trail off and kind of just make uh, some vines on the top top side of that 
So, what is she doing? She's playing with the. Oh my cow. Some of the eggs fell out of something. I need to go in there and clean. And um, she's playing with that. So, yay, we got X Men and another subscriber. <laughs> Oh, some of those subscribed to his channel? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Videos after this. Yay. That's awesome. Uh, looks like I got 12. We got 12 currently. We've been an hour. Yeah, I just started because I only have 30 two minutes. Talking, so I didn't know. I know. There's a lot of like non talkers on here. Hey, and that's okay. I used to be a non talker, I used to talk too much. I like the talkers, so they make me feel like I don't have to. They make you feel like a prince. No, they make me feel like I'm not <laughs> bored. It's not boring. Correct. Hmm. Well, some of them just might not know what to say. I wouldn't know what to say, probably. Here's the thing that sucks is that they can't see what I'm doing right now. Well, do you want me to hold the camera up? No, it's okay. I'll show everybody once I'm done. You won't take any help. Well, I mean, if you want to hold the camera up, you can, but you're going to have to kind of watch that. And look at my big old belly on the TV there. <laughs> oh, you're a mess. <laughs> I'm sure we are just comment relief to most people. <laughs> I'm going to cut that down a little bit. That's too. Shit. Snikes. I guess it's better to leave it bigger anyway. It's going to shrink up on me. Kind of gets to take over the talking. Psycho Axman, it's not boring to give you a hundred dollars. What? <laughs> See, he'd be a good man to get to know. Not not just because of money, because he just seems like a really good cool dude. Dude, I don't even know what to say, man. Other than I guess you get this thing. <laughs> Maybe that's his goal. He was like, oh, you you said you were going to sell that? <laughs> Just everyone, wait. Everyone says you're not boring. Let me, let me pledge you enough and you're going <laughs> to hand that puppy over. It's mine. I mean, smart man. What can I say? Just, see, you're not boring. Just some people don't want to talk. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I get at least a hundred of it because I'm holding the camera. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. I think I get a portion too. For me. Oh yeah, Corinne is here, so she gets 50, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. thinking some of those uh tripods and oh. stuff that we saw today are we coming in uh handy brie B brie which is brenda. oh brenda's here what's up i just started watching a little while ago you're not boring and shh, he's building badass stuff <laughs> who <laughs> said that accent. that's funny why won't you talk um i am my husband's Belly is so much bigger, don't worry. Uh -huh. Hey, I don't mind his belly being big as long as he loves me. I do. I told him he's stuck with me no matter what, anyway. So is that a silicone brush? Uh no. <laughs> I don't it's a Walmart special, guys. I don't think so. It's because I remember buying it. It's from Walmart. It was like a pack of six for two dollars. Yeah. So. He's just ruining it. No big deal. I 
spend zero real dollars on brushes because I abuse the living crap out of them. And like I said, I hide my good ones from them because I won't let them touch them. Because I like to actually draw and paint, so which I don't do very often, but still. Which you should do more. She does a really good job um, drawing, painting. She does some uh, calligraphy type stuff that's pretty cool. I want you to bend. I like to be the behind the camera, not in front, though. Bend. Man, that does not want to taper off. And here's the part, like right now. So this is we're talking about the difference between the clays. I want this to point off more for me, and because it's kind of thicker, so there's. I know what I'm dealing with is like a blob of cardboard basically in here and it does not want to pull down real narrow. So those are those are some of those issues like I say when you're talking about you can't get fine detail it does work good on bulking things out some of this stuff that I'm trying to get some finer points on it doesn't want to do. Because I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's really good brushes for pushing stuff. Axman says, "Where do you get them at?" What's that? The he brushes? says there's really good brushes for pushing stuff. Isn't that what he said? These are, or there are mm -hmm. really good brushes. They're, I think it. Oh yeah, I mean, I guess I should ask, dude, because since you're doing now, you're blocking my like wet clay and things like that. And do you have like? I don't know if he had any, some different brushes might. that work better for pushing around clay or whatever. Yeah. Or... Hey, don't make a party foul and spill my beer. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get this. <laughs> what? Okay, here. No, I'm just trying to stay out of your way because you're. This yeah. is going to need. See, that's going to need a little more clay right there, but I'm going to let that dry. And once it dries and hardens, I'm going to add some more clay in here so I can really smash that in and feather that out. And I don't like how, I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is coming in super sharp mm. right here. It's almost squared off between this Hold on, and here. All right. I, I'm off on my camera. Here, let me see it. I'll see if I can There it is. It. I got it. You got it? I got it now. Okay. So, like, right here is, this is coming in flat. And square here. I don't like that. I want that to come up, but I'm having a problem. I've got it super wet right now as I put so much paste into it. It's sliding around on me too much. So with this, I'm going to have to let this dry up. That way this becomes rigid and then I'll come in here and put another little ball in here and then smooth that ball into the rest of them. We'll give this a better arch, but I just have it way, way, way too wet with paste. I can't really deal with it tonight so it's going to have to dry okay. so we can do that so that's some okay. that's some of the problems with this clay is you might get it too wet and you're wanting to do more with it and you just kind of get screwed and you have to wait let it dry up and then come back and deal with it later all right so axman says hobby lobby silicone brushes you keep it wet and then i am says i'm sorry which two clays are you using Hobby Lobby silicone brushes. So they make like. So yeah, yeah, I've seen them before. I have to go check that out. Uh, I'll definitely go check that out. And then, what was the other question? Uh, what, which two clays are you using? Which your. Right now, right now, I'm just using a carton clay. That's it. Nothing else. Man, can I get that clay thin enough to put on these leaves? I don't know. I think I just need to strip mache these leaves again. I'm not going to put clay in that. That'll bulk those out too much. Way too much. My action shows this patience. Patience is virtue. So I've been told. I don't have any of it. You have to have lots of patience with this. I think that's the number one thing. I've talked to different people who've done who. Um, 
do normal clay and things like that and then we talk about what i'm doing with this and i really think a big thing with mache is you have to have a lot of patience this is not fast it it comes together pretty slow um i have patience with kids but not this kind of stuff i mean that's right <laughs> Well, as far as, but look, really this thing here though, this project, this project or a mache project has actually pretty fast come across. Yeah. It's really come uh, along really quick. Why are you doing that? Uh, this doesn't have any kind of sealer on the bottom of it. Hmm. So I'm putting a layer of mache paste on the bottom. This is exposed raw, that real crappy cheap foam. And I want to seal it with this to give it the best chance of not shrinking. So that's the thing with live art. I'm assuming he's saying patience. And I like art and I can do patience with that, but not, I don't know. Um, have you made large pumpkins? Uh, what do you consider large? <laughs> I made a dragon head that was a pumpkin. And it was, when you sit on its end, it was over five foot tall. And it was about four and a half foot round with a big mouth so that one was big uh you made one really big whenever you sold it when you did the uh, art show yeah i made another kind of larger oh, oh, pumpkin oh, oh. that was probably you could still put it on a table i mean it was probably kind of three foot round and yay big that to me is big for a pumpkin most of my pumpkins i make are standard like yeah. the size of a pumpkin and i try to keep them that way yeah but I haven't made like any giant besides the dragon head. I haven't made any like, you know, four foot tall, big, round, huge pumpkins. <laughs> Dragons are badass. Dragons are awesome. And I need to make another pumpkin dragon because I killed the old one. Well, you burned them actually. Yes. We need to make another. I do. I want to make another, but I want to get all this pumpkin stuff done for this year. I want some crazy pumpkin stuff. I want to still make some big, tall pumpkin jacks and some other things. I got a lot of stuff I want to make this year for uh, Halloween. Okay, so cool. We got, uh, let's do this real quick. Let's make you dizzy and barf. I don't know. I think I was making them. Uh, let's see how we can do this. So, yeah, here it is. So this is, woo, whoa, that's crazy. Uh. This is just a standard eight carton clay. It looks pretty smooth and it is kind of smooth right now, but when this dries, it's going to crinkle up and it's going to give a cool viney texture. So we basically just got it kind of layered on and it was like, you saw it, it's easy. I just smashed it on there and then just used a brush to um, smooth it around, which works and it's going to work. Uh, it's going to work just fine. I can't really do any more with it. There's some more details I want to do, but I got it saturated. This thing really needs to set and dry. So this will set and dry. It'll crinkle up. Uh, these leaves on the side here, I'm not going to put clay on them because it's going to thicken it up too much. But I am going to, just so you guys know, I'm not going to do it right now. Um, here in the next day or so, I'm going to run just some mache paste over the top of these and do some more. And I'm just going to use newspaper strip machés and, and little bitty strips. So the smaller stuff like that, that's got some curves and, and junk in it, the smaller you make your strips, the better off you'll be. They'll lay flatter. Uh, I'm just going to cover that with that. I'm not going to cover the wire. I like how thin the wire is. I'll just paint that wire when we go to do painting. So I'm going to layer those up, and then hopefully this thing will be dry enough by next Saturday. And we'll throw some paint on this thing and call this project done so are you gonna video that too or are we doing this again video and what the paint yes are we gonna do this yes again? you guys want to see i assume that you guys want to see this thing painted am i correct am yeah, i wrong i know you had someone say they wanted to watch your technique so if you guys want to see it painted then i plan on next saturday seven o'clock central my time again um we'll paint this thing I have a five foot beach oh, yeah, ball. I was thinking of. Yeah, the beach ball will definitely hold up, um, for sure. Blow that thing up, 
and then layer it. But what I would do is I would like run two or three layers at first, right? Of your strip mache, let that dry. Don't go set it out in the sun. Do not take the beach ball, layer it up and put it in the sun. If you put it in the sun, the heat from the sun will expand that ball and it's going to pop on the inside. It'll break your outer layer. Don't put it in the sun. So I put like two or three layers on it, let it dry. Once it dries, then I'd run another two or three layers. But here's the thing I would, and I would do that over and over again, because something that big, you really need to have that strip mache layer that needs to be 10, 12, 15 layers. The more you layer that up, the stronger that that's going to be. And you want that base as strong as possible. And then depending if you're, if you're going to do clay, it definitely has to be super strong to hold the clay. If you're not going to do clay and you're going to do a cotton ball technique, you can get away with it a little bit better because um, it's lighter. And then the only other clay, and we haven't really talked about it recently, the only other clay that I like better than any of this clay is um, I have a tutorial on making clay out of sawdust. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. I have a friend who does a lot of woodworking, so I get sold, I get sawdust from him from free. And let me tell you, the sawdust clay that I did is incredible uh that pumpkin's up in the garage it's super super strong it's very heavy when it's done you could sand it down and then stain it and all if you wanted just a wood look and stain but i've got a pumpkin that i've made uh with the sawdust clay that that pumpkin i guarantee you i can set out in the yard and let it stay there forever and it will never ever have a problem it's incredible. So I just want to say question, questions, question mark. I want to see paint. I want it. And then he says, oh, Richard, yeah. I, I feel like you're going to get it. Mopar, Chevy, or Ford, gearhead yeah. question. Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh, brother, they all break down, right? <laughs> I can't. That's the problem. I'm, I'm a fan of all of them. They're all mechanical. Well, they all break down. Uh, built motorcycles for years too. Whatever. Harley Davidson, whatever. They, Harleys are cool. I've owned a few of them. Hey, to kind of answer that question, Psycho, I've got a 51 Chevy pickup outside. I uh, bought it years ago. I gave it to my boy. And of course, he's in the Marines. I think I'm going to pull that in and, and strip it down and redo it for him. But, like, when you're talking 50 style stuff, dude, my favorite pickup is a 55, 56 Ford pickup. I love the way the front of that thing looks. But, man, they're all, they're all great. They all have their problems. They all have their benefits. And they all break down at some point in time. It's just the way it is, right? So, maybe that answers your question. I thought it was just a an answer. Analogy, I wasn't sure. I thought he was just being silly. Yeah, no, because you got guys that are strong Mopar guys, you got guys that are strong Chevy guys, and you got guys that are just strong Ford guys, and that's uh -huh. all they'll do. All right. I'll do them all. All right. It's been almost two hours. We got this thing done. Two minutes away. Uh, I've got an hour and four. My show is an uh, hour okay, and forty-eight. Yeah, we started late. Sorry. So. Just wanted. Just kidding. We got all the clay done. I'm going to let this stuff dry. Uh, we'll get back to painting it. So we'll do this next week again, next Saturday. Uh, we'll do paint. My time's going to be 7 o'clock. That's Central Standard Time. I hope all you guys that have been here and hung out come back again. Um, have some fun. You guys that are here, talk more. Ask me questions. I enjoy the questions a whole lot. I appreciate everything. Psycho's Mopar. Should have figured. Probably like Plum Purple. Um, dude, you can't, you know, some of them old chargers and stuff, they're the shit. I gotta say it, but, uh, I appreciate all you guys. Shout out back to all my patrons. Shout out to Psycho Axe Man. He's a crazy man on here showing some support with the super chats. I can't, you, you're awesome, brother. 
the rest of you guys. We'll see you later. I hope you guys have a good weekend. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy time with your family. Um, if you guys got anybody in service and that type of thing, um, prayers for those guys that everything's good. And we'll catch you all next Saturday. Have a good one.